It's Bill Meeks here for Building Dreams, where I'll help you use the latest AI technology to build your own dreams, just like I'm using them to build my first cartoon series set in my Everly Heights universe. It's a sitcom called Very Special, and Stable Diffusion is a very special tool. Today, I'm going to show you eight awesome plugins for Stable Diffusion that you can use to bring your own creative dreams to life, just like I'm doing with Everly Heights. Okay, let's get into it. First up is Dream Booth. Now, if you've played around with iOS apps like Lenza and their magic avatar picture generator, Dream Booth is what they were using behind the scenes. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll have you send in a few pictures and then they figure out the style of your, your face and send you back a bunch of pictures in fantasy artwork. You can do all of that on your computer with Stable Diffusion. In fact, I've been training my own models in Stable Diffusion for a few months now in preparation for Everly Heights. Let me show you my EH set designer. Okay, now this is automatic 1111 or automatic 1111, however you want to say it. This is my interface I use to interact with the Stable Diffusion engine. It has a lot of plugins that, with it too. One of them I really like it's called Dream Booth. Now, what Dream Booth allows you to do is it allows you to train your own uh, set data set to help generate images. You can train it on your face, uh, like I have with my Bill Meeks data set. You can train it on a style of image, which I've been doing with my EH character maker model that will, I'll show off more in a couple weeks. Now, the process of training these images isn't really all that hard from a human point of view. Basically, all you need to do is you need a data set, uh, anywhere from five to 40 or 400 pictures. Sometimes you want some classification images to toss in there with it, although I find that makes the models more noisy and more junky. And then you just need time and a lot of computing power. The way you put together a custom model for stable diffusion is you collect that, that data set, those images, then you caption all of the images so stable diffusion knows what it's trying to build. For example, for my EH character maker model, I trained it all full body pose, T position. You just want the program to know what it's looking at. And then lastly, you click this train button and let it go to town for hours and hours and you're gonna hear your graphics card going <laughs> But eventually you'll have a decent model. Speaking of overworking your graphics card, you don't have to do that to take advantage of Stable Diffusion and all these cool plugins I'm showing you today. And that's all thanks to our sponsor at runpod.io. So what if you think this stuff looks interesting, but you don't own a high-end graphics card like I do? With RunPod, you can start your own server to run Stable Diffusion on somebody else's computer, starting at just 20 cents per hour. RunPod has some beefy servers at their disposal, which means I'm going to be able to train and fine tune my custom models in half the time it would take me on this machine that I'm recording this on right now. I want to personally thank RunPod for sponsoring Building Dreams and helping me bring my own dreams to life. Start building your dreams with RunPod by going to runpod.everlyheights.tv so they know we sent you their way. Now again, as far as Dream Booth, I'll get into a lot more detail on how to train your own model on RunPod or your big beefy gaming PC. So stay tuned for that. Now for in painting. So what if you like something that Stable Diffusion generates, but you wanna change it a little bit? With in painting, you can keep what you like and change what you don't. To demonstrate, I'm going to add a trash can to this scene I generated using my EH set designer model. Now, first we're gonna go ahead and generate an image. I'm gonna go ahead and change batch count to four here, uh, just to give me a few options to choose from. I'm just gonna go with one, uh, but I figure it's always better to have options, right? And I'm gonna dial up the CFG set setting a little bit here. The CFG scale, basically what that does, it determines how much your final image is gonna to adhere to that prompt you see up here, which in this case is an EH set designer back alley, dirty, Dungy horror film. EH set designer is the keyword that lets Stable Diffusion know to use my custom model. I'm also going to go ahead because I train this on wide images because I'm going to be making 16 by 9 shows, right? So I want to have wide sets for my shows. 
So I'm going to go ahead and change the size of the image from 512 to 512 to 512 to 288. There we go. And that'll ensure there won't be any weirdness or extra chairs or like spider webs on the walls and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and click generate and see what happens. All right, they're coming in. Here we go. You'll see them start to load in as it goes. Ooh, these are kind of creepy. I like these. All right, let's take a look at these here. So we have this one. It's very dirty, all torn up and everything. This one is definitely a back alley. Uh, the walls can be kind of windy, but you can fix those within painting like I'm gonna show you in a minute. This one is a little too abstract for my taste. And this one's good, but it's a little busy. So we're gonna go with this one. This one seems pretty simple. So now to uh, go ahead and start the in painting, just click send to in paint. Okay, and it'll bring it over here. Everything came over, that's good. We'll go ahead and change this to DPM uh, 2M Keras. And uh, let's see if everything else here is good. Yeah, everything else should be good. Now, like I said, we're gonna be trying out in painting here, so bear with me. What we're going to do is we're going to try and put a trash can here in this corner of the image. So let's go ahead and take our paintbrush and make it nice and big. And uh, for some reason, my install kind of bugs out and it puts the image in a little frame here when you're doing in painting. Generally, you'd have access to the entire frame back here. But we're going to put the trash can here. So I'm just going to take this and just make a very rough shape over here, like so. And uh, let's go down here. Um, I believe I have these settings right. We're going to fill with original, but in paint area is only masked. Now we don't want a whole back alley to generate in that tiny little space. We want a little trash can. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put a little rusted trash can, rusty metal, old. Just throw a bunch of keywords in there to kind of really try and push it towards what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, put that denoising strength up to like 0 0.8, because uh, again, that tells Stable Diffusion how much it should respect your prompt, and in this case, the image you're feeding into the in painting. So let's click Generate. All right, they're coming in. You see them there in the space from the, from the picture. And we got a, a few options here. Uh, that one's pretty good. It's not quite a, as rusty of a trash, trash can as I'd like. Like, I'll, I'll zoom in here so you can see. It's not quite as rusty as I'd like. That one got confused. <laughs> that one also got confused and got cut off. And then that one's decent, but you know what? A lot of times I find when with in painting and going through, you know, the various options, a lot of times the first option is the best option. I think that trash can looks great. Now you can do all sorts of things with this in painting stuff. You know, for example, if I was generating a person and I didn't like the look of their face, like they had weird wonky eyes or something, not because they're a weird person, but because Stable Diffusion does that sometimes. I could paint over their entire face and be like, give me a new face. There's a lot of possibilities within painting and it's one of the first tools in your tool set as far as taking control of image generation in Stable Diffusion. Now, I know, I know there's been a lot of people out there hating on AI generative art because, you know, they think it's just a type in a prompt and get an image, right? Or that it doesn't take a lot of work or that they're standing on the backs of artists that came before them, you know, like every artist ever in history. Bottom line, they don't think there's much artistry to using this stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can have as much or as little artistic control as you want thanks to a great plugin for Stable Diffusion Automatic 111 one, called ControlNet. ControlNet comes with several models that let you control how an image is generated. To demonstrate, I'm gonna take this picture of Screech from Saved by the Bell, then turn it into me using my custom Bill Meeks model. Rip Dustin Diamond, by the way, uh, your miss, despite being a little problematic to society as a whole and to your cast on Saved by the Bell in particular. So I'm gonna turn myself into Screech here. Now you'll see here, I'm in the image to image tab here, which allows you to take an image and run it through Stable Diffusion 
to get a new result. I'm, I've also went ahead and put the Dustin Diamond headshot down here into control net. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. And just to give you an ex some examples here, I'm gonna show you some of the preprocessors. So there's Canny, and if you click preview annotate a result down here at the bottom, it'll show you kind of what it'll give stable diffusion to inform the picture. So that's Canny, and that kind of gives just like a general outline. Depth gives you a depth map, which gives you basically, you know, you see Screech's head there, and then you see the background because he's on a flat background. You also have things like color. And you'll see here it just gives big general blobs of like what colors are on the image to inform the image generation as it goes on. And uh, what's another one that's fun here? This one isn't really good for people, uh, but it is really good for things like rooms, like my EH set designer model. It's called head. I don't know what that stands for, but it generates something like this. And it gives you sort of like this weird, like negative photo image that it can use to inform how it puts together the final image. So we're gonna go ahead and take this image here. And for the first one, we're gonna choose depth. And we're gonna apply that just to give uh, the final image of my head, the basic shape of Dustin Diamond's head. And then we're gonna make sure that's enabled. And then we're gonna come over here because you can stack multiple of these. I generally have four here up top. I think you can have more than that, but I don't wanna risk it. And we'll go ahead and select our screech picture again, click enable and uh, select the T2i adapter color model for the final model. The preprocessor is what gives you uh, this guy right here. And then the uh, model is what interprets that and puts it into your image. So we're gonna have the shape of Dustin Diamond, the colors of his shirt and the general color of his hair. And then uh, just to maybe hopefully focus on that hair again, I'm going to go ahead and add a canny here. So I'll, sh I'll load up the image and then preview my annotated result to get the canny. And again, that'll just cue it even more to Dustin Diamond's face. Make sure to select the model as well. This looks a lot like Dustin Diamond, right? And I'm trying to make this look a bit more like Bill Meeks. So guidance start and guidance end. It's like, when do I start paying attention to the image you gener I, you sent me? Uh, you know, this, this canny map here. And when do I stop paying attention to it and start paying more attention to your prompt? So I'm gonna go ahead and dial this down to maybe like 0.8. So, you know, it builds Screech as you would expect. And uh, then right before it stops, it lets go of that. And it's like, no, I want this to be Bill Meeks all the way. Which reminds me, um, we're gonna go come up here and type in a prompt for this because I, I don't wanna generate another room in my EH set designer thing, right? So uh, a good way to find a prompt or at least get started with a prompt when you're doing image to image is have an image loaded up here in image to image and then click interrogate clip. It's gonna take a second to think here and then it's gonna spit out a text line here a prompt based on your image. It basically looks at the image and it's like, if I created this image, what would the prompt have looked like? And here we go. A young man with a colorful shirt and tie on posing for a picture in a studio photo studio uh, with a black background. Andrew Stefovich, uh, I believe is an artist. David Lazier, a character portrait, Rayanism. Now this is just a standard picture, so I don't want any artist names in here. So I'm gonna clear these out. It is a character portrait. I don't know what Rayanism is, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out just to simplify this. And uh, then most importantly, um, I'm going to add a Bill Meeks young man here with a colorful shirt and tie. I, and that, will, that keyword will tell my stable diffusion checkpoint Bill Meeks model to go ahead and uh, make this look like me, Bill Meeks. I'm also gonna hold down, select Bill Meeks and hold down control then hit up a couple times to adjust the weight of the Bill Meeks word. So it pushes it more towards looking like me, right? So I think that's all set up. Let's see how close this is to me as Screech uh, when it comes through. There we go. That's a good halfway point between me and Screech for sure. Those are really good options. All right, so here we go. Let's see which one of these is closest. Hold on, let me take off my glasses. 
Okay, hold that frame. And we'll click through these. This one, this one, this one, or this one. All things considered, I think probably this guy right here. So we're going to go ahead and move forward with this guy. But like I said, you know, he doesn't quite look like me. So again, we can use that in painting trick. Since we're just dealing with the face, we can shorten this entire thing up into a white young man, a white Bill Meeks young man, a character portrait. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and come back in here into in painting, bring up this, just go ahead and paint in the whole face there. We'll probably go ahead and start this with an even lower denoising strength, just to sort of layer my face on top of dust and diamonds until we get something we're happy with. It is looking more like me, but I feel like the control net's probably holding it back. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, disable this control net because that looks so much like dust and diamond that it's probably holding the face in there. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Definitely getting closer. Let's go ahead and bring up the denoising to something up pretty powerful, like a 0.7. That's looking a little like Mark Zuckerberg, actually. All right, let's, uh... oh, that's looking like a sad Mark Zuckerberg. Look at sad Mark Zuckerberg, aw. All right, so let's go ahead and jack this like way, way up to like a 0.85, cause I wanna see my face on screeches, man. Hey, and there we go. That looks quite a bit like me. Uh, close enough that I can probably use it for the thumbnail for this YouTube video anyway. Again, ControlNet is a very, very powerful model that will allow you to get exactly what you want out of Stable Diffusion. Now I have my custom set maker, which is great, but I'm still figuring out how I'm gonna take these images and animate them with the characters I'm generating in After Effects. So I've been looking at a couple options here, including a plugin called SD Depth Map. Now SD depth map will take an image I put an image to image and generate a depth map for it that I can take over into After Effects to animate camera moves. It'll pan behind, it'll have that parallax effect, kind of like uh, the old Disney movies. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and generate a depth map here. We come into script and then depth map. That's all good. Now you wanna make sure to go here and turn the denoising strength way down so it doesn't change the image very much at all. I'm gonna put it at like 0.1. And then we'll go ahead and click and generate our depth map. And there we go, you see? We have the image here, barely changed because I put it at such a low denoising strength, and a depth map that we can take over into After Effects to make a really cool panning animation like this. Now this is a nice effect. It might be good for subtle camera movements, but it's not really gonna work if we have characters like behind furniture and stuff like that, right? Which is why we have another option. We're gonna get back to talking about the tools of the trade here in just a minute. But first we need to talk about our other sponsor, Stream Studio. Yes, this video is brought to you by Stream Studio, a service which lets YouTubers and streamers like me take control of their live stream just like I'm taking control of graphics with Stable Diffusion. You can switch between cameras, add graphics in lower thirds, and stream out to YouTube, Twitch, and other services all at the same time. We want to thank Stream Studio for sponsoring Building Dreams and allowing you to build your own streaming dreams with Stream Studio. Try it out today by going to streamstudio.everlyheights.tv. That's S-T-R-E-A-N-N -N Studio. And again, I want to thank Stream Studio for helping me build my dreams. Now back to the tools. So if you'll remember back to before the ad break, I was trying to come up with ways to generate sets that I can animate along with the characters in After Effects. Another option I'm looking at is a Laura. Uh, now, Laura is sort of like a checkpoint, like the custom models I've been talking about, but it's this much smaller file and much more specific about things. This one is designed to do 360 panoramic images like you might shoot with your iPhone or with one of those fancy, you know, spherical cameras that you can pan around with on YouTube. Anyway, to test this out, I'm going to download this 
and then I'm going to try it out with my Everly Height set designer. Okay, so what would be a fun set to generate to try this out here? Let's try in EH set designer something really interesting. I know, living room. Here we go. Let's see if we can get a living room going. Now, we have to go ahead and add our 360 diffusion, Laura, to the prompt up here. And then we're just going to go ahead and generate four and see if we like any of them. Here we go. See, these are fun, right? Good times to be had. I like a lot of these. These are definitely living rooms of some variety. And again, to bring these into After Effects, I would have to probably mask out all of this furniture and things that characters could go behind. But it's a really nice quality thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in a panoramic photo editor. OK, so we'll go ahead and load this in. And it's going to pop it in there. We can go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And then, you know, we can pan around and check it out. I think this might be, this is like really, really tight though. It's not necessarily the strongest result in the world. Maybe if we picked one of these with more of a room to it. So let me try this one. So give me a sec and bring it back into the 360 photo viewer. And see that one, the results are still kind of muddy, right? You know. This one, I thought it had some promise. Doing this test here, maybe it doesn't. But, you know, go around and play around with it. I might be junking up the picture a little bit because I'm just doing a quick and dirty upscale too. So I'm going to keep playing around with this, but it's not looking like the best option for me, for my purposes. You might find a lot of use out of it, though. Again, it could be my custom model is looking all funky with this model. Okay, this one's called Latent Couple. And I'm not gonna do a demo of it for you today because I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it. But this is another way to sort of very finely control what you're putting in your images. So basically what you do is you take, you know, you have a square image, then you want the right side to be one thing and the left side to be the other. Down here on the page are some examples, see? And unfortunately, you know, this is uh, with AI artwork, there's a lot of uh, wafus, I think they're called a lot of like, sultry anime inspired innovations. But I mean, I guess isn't that always the way with technology? What they've done here is they've set it up to where there's one person on the left and the other person on the right. And then the way they have the prompting set up is you can be like, okay, I want a dark haired girl and in all caps, a blonde girl. And it'll put those in the appropriate spots that you marked out. Um, and I guess we're not gonna be looking at that example. <laughs> But that's the basic idea is that you can mark out different parts of an image and put specific things there. You'll notice a lot of the things I'm talking about today, a lot of the tools have that aspect to them because I'm trying to build not just a general feel-good image. I'm trying to build very specific sets that the script says there's a lamp in the corner. So there needs to be a lamp in the corner, that sort of thing. So I need to find a way to very reliably put what I want in the image where I want it while maintaining the style I've built out for the project. And latent couple seems like a really good option, you know, dirty pictures aside. Now this is another example in the same vein as latent couple. It's called in paint anything. And it's based on research Facebook of all people put out for everyone to develop by and advance with a few weeks back. And, and it's the first implementation I've seen for automatic 1111 of this concept. But again, it's so new, I don't have a handle on it. I don't feel comfortable demoing it to you, especially in the context of a wider video. But if we take a look at the project here, the logo provides a clue. You'll see those two blue AI there. Um, basically what it does is you can take any image and uh, you'll see in this image, there's a dog there and you run it through this processor and it labels and masks it out. Oh, this is where a dog goes, or this is where the figure on the bench goes is probably a better way to put it. And then it'll follow your prompt. So you can say, remove the dog and it'll take the dog out. You can say, put a teddy bear in place of the dog and it'll do that. Or you can say, you know what? Keep the dog, I love the dog. Put them on a swing set. 
And so again, this is very, very uh, specific instructions that you can give stable diffusion to get what you want out of it. Uh, it'll be great for, you know, switching out weird props. Like I didn't want a bookshelf there in that background or, you know, aspects of a character that I generate that I don't like. Like, I don't want that guy to have an eye tag because he's like the anti eye tag guy in the script. I don't have an anti eye tag guy in the script, but for example, and it'll segment out that eye tag and replace it with, you know, regular skin. And the nice thing is, is because it's marking out very specifically what is in the image, the thing that it, it's segmenting out what is in the image. It can replace that with high consistency while matching the image that you're working with anyway. So it's a really cool tool and uh, it's gonna save people a lot of hours in Photoshop, putting together weird mashups of, I don't know, Reservoir Dogs and Muppet Babies. So last but not least, you can do a lot inside of Stable Diffusion, but sometimes you need something more powerful, right? Luckily, there's a great plugin for Photoshop that lets you access your Stable Diffusion install or, you know, remote server from our sponsor RunPod, runpod.everlyheights.tv, and then use it directly in Photoshop to edit photos on the fly within Photoshop. All the power of Photoshop combined with AI image generation. What's not to love? And here, I'm just gonna show you a real quick example here. I'm going to generate a set from my E8 Shet Designer model uh, because this is tapped in to my Stable Diffusion install, which you can see running over here. Okay, so we go ahead and fill in our prompt here like we did over there. If we had a negative prompt, I'm not gonna use one today, but it would go right here. You can also select from some of your styles that you have saved in Automatic 111 if you want. You can change your seed if you want to, your sampling method, your steps. I'm going to turn these steps down a little bit. And your CFG scale. And then you just click generate and it'll think for a minute. And then it'll give us an option here. And you know, it's not the best generation, but I can use things like image to image and in paint right within Photoshop too. So it's a really powerful tool and Something I'm gonna be using a lot is I'm doing, and I'll stress this, the things that come out of Stable Diffusion aren't production ready. There's gonna to need to be a lot of cleanup in Photoshop, a lot of cleanup in After Effects, a lot of cleanup everywhere to get to something that I'm comfortable sending out as a Bill Meeks production. And plugins like this from stable.art are gonna help me get there. So those are the tools I've gathered so far that I'm gonna try and use to bring my Everly Heights series to life. But if there's one thing I know about the AI space, it's that it's constantly marching forward and there's probably gonna be a whole new batch of tools right when I get into production. So it's gonna be challenging, but it's gonna be fun and you can join me. If you want to follow my journey to build Everly Heights, like and subscribe right here on YouTube. You know, the buttons are right there. It's really easy, right? And you can also go over to everlyheights.tv and sign up for the mailing list at the bottom of the page to get updates. And let me know if you wanna get involved as an actor, as someone to help me clean up the AI art, anything. It's a big group project. You can also email me at billmeeks at everlyheights.tv. So those are some of the tools I'm gonna to try and use to bring Everly Heights to life for you, right in front of your eyes. Well, thanks for joining me today. And I can't wait to share more with you about my journey bringing Everly Heights to life with the latest in AI technology. We'll see you next time.